Hello, I am presenting Notochord, a flexible probabilistic model for real-time MIDI performance, which is the work of Victor Shepardson, that's me, my colleague Jack Armitage, and our PI Thor Magnuson in the Intelligent Instruments Lab at the Iceland University of Arts in Reykjavik. In our lab, we want to know what it is like to work with creative AI when its behavior can only be drawn out via interaction with the body, in a musical performance, for example. To help study this, we designed a low latency model for MIDI streams called Notochord. Notochord is a probabilistic generative model. This means that it can distinguish probable from improbable streams, but also generate new streams which resemble its training data. We use MIDI because a stream of MIDI events can represent both a live performance with a controller as well as pre programmed songs. Hundreds of thousands of MIDI files are available as training data. And this lets us bring large-scale statistical AI into a performance context to feel how it behaves. Compared to other MIDI models, Notochord has two distinguishing properties. One, it has low latency. It can respond to inputs in around 10 milliseconds. This is important for the design of digital musical instruments, which we often want to feel as immediate and physical as possible. The other property is what we call flexibility. When Notochord is generating a MIDI stream, it lets you make precise and interpretable queries on the next event. For example, you can require that the next event in a performance have a pitch class of C, while Notochord chooses the register, timing, and velocity. Or, you might want it to occur no sooner than 100 milliseconds from now, which Notochord will consider when choosing which instrument plays next. An instrument designer can program this kind of intervention, and a performer can then make it in real time. As we will see, this leads to applications including an adaptive harmonizer, machine improvisation, stochastic sequencing, and more, all using the same pre-trained model. We chose the name notochord because it evokes the notes and chords of MIDI music, but it is also a biological term for the primeval spine shared by all vertebrates, since our model acts as a nervous system or flexible backbone off of which to build intelligent MIDI instruments. So, how does it work? Notochord is a deep autoregressive model, like some previous MIDI models and other widely known generative models like GPT-3 and WaveNet. Here's a diagram. At the input, Notochord converts MIDI events into vectors of numbers. It then crunches these numbers through a differentiable function approximator with lots of free parameters, a so-called neural network. Vectors coming out the other end are used to describe a probability distribution, which assigns a numerical probability to any possible subsequent MIDI event. To do this with low latency, it uses a recurrent neural network, which processes only one input for each output, while still depending on all previous events via a persistent state. For Notochord, each MIDI event is composed of a pitch, an instrument ID, a delta time since the previous event, and a velocity. Node off events are just events with a velocity of zero. Pitches and instruments are treated as categorical variables, as they are in MIDI. There are 128 pitches, and we use the 128 general MIDI melodic instruments, plus 128 drum kits, and then 16 additional anonymous instruments, which the training data can randomly be mapped to. We treat delta time and velocity as continuous variables, since we want Notochord to handle MIDI performed on a controller with no predefined tempo, in which case timing and velocity are both continuous quantities, which get quantized and censored to some degree in the conversion to MIDI files. To model this, we use the discretized mixture of logistics distribution, originally proposed by Saliman Zadal, for modeling pixel intensities in images. So, each sub-event, pitch, instrument, velocity, time, has a distribution. That is, Notochord returns not just a predicted next value, but the relative probabilities of all possible values. However, the sub-events are not conditionally independent, even given all previous events. Which pitch will sound next depends on which instrument will play it, the velocity depends on whether it will fall on a strong beat, and so on. To model the joint distribution of sub-events making up a whole event, we factor each event autoregressively, predicting sub-events one after the other. However, we don't want to impose a fixed order on the sub-events, because we want a user to be able to intervene causally within each event. If the next instrument needs to be bass, we don't want Notochord to sample a high note before deciding the instrument. But, conversely, if the next note needs to be low, we don't want to sample the piccolo instrument before deciding the pitch. A user of Notochord should be able to make interventions in any desired order. For example, what is the pitch of the next event if it must be a note off? 
What is the instrument of the next event if it occurs in exactly 300 milliseconds? Our solution is to randomize the dependencies between sub-events at training time, fitting all possible orderings at once. This is depicted by the mixing matrix at the center of the system diagram. To summarize, Notochord is an autoregressive generative model for MIDI sequences. It can generate MIDI streams with polyphony and multiple instruments at a low latency, and it doesn't require any predetermined musical structures like a fixed tempo. To achieve this, it compromises on fidelity. Notochord generates less coherent music than state-of-the-art models, but it can be interacted with in a very immediate, hands-on way. Notochord also behaves like a tiny in-painting model within each event, allowing fine-grained interventions into the real-time generation. We trained Notochord on the LOCK MIDI dataset for up to 20 billion total MIDI events, which takes a few days on a single GPU. With a variety of data augmentation strategies, we observed no overfitting. This figure visualizes the effect of sub-event order on model performance. Here the negative log likelihood is broken out for each modality, and we see how it improves when depending on more of the other sub-events from left to right within each plot. Lower is better here. For example, in the green plot at bottom left, here is the loss for the time prediction given only previous events. Here it is given one other sub-event, two, and all three. As expected, the model can take advantage of more information to improve predictions. We can also see that some modalities are more informative than others. For example, here in the top left, knowing the pitch is more helpful for predicting the instrument than knowing the velocity or the time. For many more details, see our paper and open source repository. The Notochord Python API provides an interface to feed events to the model and query for predictions on the next event. Our examples expose the Notochord API over open sound control, but you could also use it from a Python program. A particular application would determine what to feed Notochord, when and how to query it, and what to do with the results, like scheduling a predicted event to occur after the given delta time and sending the MIDI off to a synthesizer. In our examples, these scheduler applications are written in SuperCollider. So let's see what Notochord can actually do. In this blue terminal, I am running the Notochord server, and in the red terminal, I'm running FluidSynth, which is an open source sound font synthesizer, which can do all the general MIDI sounds. To the left is the SuperCollider code of the scheduling application. There's a MIDI controller here in the upper right, but I'm not going to play it yet. First of all, we can listen to music Notochord generates when just sampling without intervention. That's pretty funny. Setting these sampling temperatures lets us tweak the character of the results. For example, tending to sample fewer new instruments. Here's an example where we constrain the pitches to these four pitch classes in these four octaves and then change that constraint. We can also play along with Notochord. To do this, we just reserve an instrument for any non-Notochord player and zero the probability that Notochord will sample it. Whenever a MIDI event occurs, we query Notochord for the next event. If the player produces another event before Notochord's prediction is scheduled to play, we would just cancel it and get a new prediction. Here's me on the harmonium while Notochord plays vibraphone.
This model, trained on the locked dataset, doesn't seem to know much about improvisation, but we could imagine fine-tuning on bespoke datasets, or combining Notochord's probabilistic knowledge with other strategies to build machine improvisers. We also built Notochord thinking of use cases where tens of milliseconds of latency make a huge difference in feel. Here's Notochord acting as an adaptive harmonizer. Each time a nodon arrives from the controller, we query Notochord for an additional simultaneous nodon with the same instrument and velocity. We also built an interface for fine-grained real-time in-painting using the title cycles language for live coding. Here we have a title pattern giving the instrumentation, the pitch, and the velocity. All the timing comes from the pattern structure. The pattern by itself sounds like this. But Notochord isn't doing anything here. We're just feeding it the results, but everything is already filled in. If I replace some of these values, some of these middle C's, with a minus one, then Notochord will fill in the blanks. In this pattern, the instrument is the 909 drum kit, and there's this four on the floor pattern with just four kick drums with specific velocities. But there's also this unspecified eighth notes and backbeat pattern for a note accord to fill in. In this case, we just tell Notochord to play eighth notes with this ramping velocity. Uh, the instrumentation and the pitch are unspecified. Finally, we can do more than just sampling from Notochord. Since it produces whole probability distributions, we can build what we call likelihood-based interfaces. Here we've built one using a Linstrument control surface. This time, we're not using FluidSynth, but doing the synthesis in SuperCollider, so no red terminal. The white pad here at the bottom fills the pitch in by just sampling Notochord given the performed timing and velocity. The yellow pad resets the model. But up here, we can choose pitches from most to least likely, so most, second most, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh most likely option. Playing just the blue pad is going to be very repetitive. In fact, it'll pretty much always do that, just repeat the same note, unless you prime it with something else. So it's playing not just a repetitive sequence, but one that it considers somehow the least surprising. You can perform surprise this way by choosing when to pick the more or less likely pitches. Hopefully we've illustrated how Notochord's polyphonic multi-instrument MIDI model, together with its low latency and the ability to make fine-grained interventions into generation, make it a very flexible backbone for building intelligent MIDI instruments. We look forward to incorporating Notochord with more physical interfaces and studying it in a live performance setting. Notochord's PyTorch implementation, model checkpoints, and the example applications are available in our GitHub repo. We'd like to personally thank Ray Guo and David Brignard-Franson for their valuable comments on the paper, and also Chris Vinjanath. 
for your discussions and code contributions. Thanks for watching.